So, Daryl, you finished your second feature film, Unspoken. Yes. It's in the film festival circuit. Right. Which film festivals do you choose? How do you choose? There's so many. Uh, you know, I tend to, um, like, I go on Film Freeway, and I tend to read about the festivals, and uh, a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times I look to see what they're interested in and see if my film maybe could be added to, you know, the kind of categories they're looking for or the, or the type of themes they're looking for. You know, it's, uh, it becomes this whole big process, you know, uh, as you're doing your research on film festivals. Um, but I also, you know, I tend to submit to film festivals that I've also gotten into before. Um because a lot, you know, there's a few of those festivals, not a lot of them, but there's a few of them that would, you know, the simple fact that you've been there before and maybe they like your work there, you know, they take your new projects as well just to uh, to screen them and stuff. So, Sure. Yeah, a lot of times, um, I, well, when I first started out, you know, I'd take mm -hmm. a chance. Oh, okay, yeah, this is local or this one sounds interesting. I've heard good things okay. about this place. And, you know, varying degrees of I had a great time to, okay, well, that wasn't, well everything i expected it to be but right. i think the film festivals that i continually enter are the ones where you make friends with the people who are running it some of the people that you know you've seen there or if you've had a good experience if you've had a good q a session i feel mm -hmm. i feel like the q a sessions are really underrated and if film festivals can fit that in then you're going to get so much more engagement with the crowd with the fellow yeah. filmmakers yeah, I think it's a very important process just to talk about the process. Yeah, I, I agree. It's uh, it's a good feeling, and it's um, when you have an audience that um, that starts, you know, that they ask questions, and you could tell that they were really paying attention to your film. It's a it's a great you know great feeling, great experience. And so I I agree. Q and A's are are you know definitely essential you know for a filmmaker you know for that they could gauge how an audience feels about their film and and so on i don't exactly do good at them but you know it's uh still it's an opportunity to get good at them right <laughs> right there you go yeah so. all right so a feature film um uh -huh. it's a little harder to get a feature film in than a short film because yep. short films are short they can program so many in a block but feature films whether they're an hour and a half shorter or longer mm -hmm. um it's a bigger investment for the film festival to take it in so how do you be how are you selective in that respect uh selective in submitting or right S submitting or and finding the right fit um it, it's still the same thing you know it's kind of um it's hard with feature films, you know, it's, um, cause like you said, I, I would imagine a lot of these festivals, uh, you know, they tend to look at who's in your film, you know, uh, could they get an audience with this film? Because remember with short films, you got a, a block of short films and you got a, a bunch of people who come see it because you got different filmmakers, different, uh, family and friends who come to see it. But with a feature, that's, that's your time. So, you know, I'm sure with the festivals, they're wondering, all right, can this person bring people in to to see the film and so on and so forth. Um, so it, it's it's hard with a feature. Uh, what I'm going to, I was actually, you know, I, like you said, I just finished my second feature film. And as that's on the, the uh, doing the festival circuit, I'm going to go back to doing short films. Um, and the uh, reason being is because I, I feel, as you mentioned before, they're easier to program for, uh, for festivals and um I'm starting to, when I first started making films, I was making short films that were like 40 minutes, you know? Um, so I'm kind of going away from that, and I'm looking to do films that are less than 10 minutes. If okay. I can make for a film that's like five minutes, even better. Um, only because I feel it's easier for these uh, festivals to program and stuff. Sure. And, so. and beyond just the festival approach, um, mm -hmm. short film has short in the title. Um, a couple mm -hmm. people... Um, myself included, I've made a 21 minute short film, which it's almost like you want it to be a feature or you want it to be something bigger than right. what a short film can be. And I, I really feel after doing that, that there's a great importance in keeping a short film short. Yes, I agree. I, I definitely agree. Um, like you, I mean, when I, you know, when I started with the shorts, it was like, I felt like I, you know, 
you know, you kind of want to make it known that, well, if I had the opportunity, I could make a feature. So your short film, you kind of make it a little longer than it really has to be. Um, but, you know, basically with short film, you should be able to get to your point um, fairly uh, quickly. And like you said, that's why it's called short film, you know. So, um, you know, once again, I'm going to definitely try to get my films uh, somewhere between five and eight minutes, maybe even less than that. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> but it's also a good... Um, um, exercise as well, you know, uh, for myself to to see how you know can I tell a story and get to the point um, right away instead of needing um, so many minutes to you know right. To so what tell it, this story Hemingway was famous for writing a story and then cutting out the first act and then mm -hmm. dropping you in media res in his story in like the second act. Right. So no. that's something I try to keep in mind. Like is all this setup necessary you know do can I get to the point faster can I get everything moving faster um, personally I'm all about condensing what I've written Would you, you know if, go ahead no I'm sorry I didn't need to interrupt you it's all right <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to actually how do you feel, uh, feel about doing a short film with uh, like an open ending you know how they say like films uh, you know when you tell them the story should have a beginning middle and ending I mean if you're doing, let's say, a two-minute short or something like that, I mean, would you consider just not giving an ending? Just well, every project's different, and right. if you're talking about an ending, like say Inception, where mm -hmm. that top is spinning and you're waiting to see if it drops, and you are not given that, then that has something to do with the theme. Um, yes. So it would really. If that's what you're talking about, then totally. I think that's the best thing you can do for a short film is to get someone thinking versus just, oh, yeah, I watched that and it was neatly wrapped up because a good guy shot all the bad guys. I don't have right. to think about this anymore. What's next? Versus mm -hmm. if you're in a block of short films with five, six other people, mm -hmm. people walk out and they want to talk to you about your film, that's, right. you've done something right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I agree, because um, you, you know the reason I was asking is because um, that's another, like another school of thought on uh, short film. Some people uh, think, or some filmmakers think that um, sometimes it's good to leave it open, you know, where you don't have a conclusion. Um, that way, you may have an audience uh, one and more. Oh, okay. But um, I have yet to do that. But, I, I, I mean, I thought about it, though. That's why I wanted to get your opinion on that. Yeah, I that's... haven't heard about that. But are they talking about... I'm just wondering if they're talking about making almost like a portion of a feature. Like, you know, this can become a feature. Like mm -hmm. seeding the idea, maybe. Yeah, I guess that's what, where they're going with that. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, for that way, perhaps, if like you said, if they're trying to pitch an idea... Um, a potential producer may look at that and say, well, okay, we could do a lot with this. Um, even though was, the short had an open ending, you know, it's, um, it may just bring people in to want to invest to see more, you know? And so, sure. And so, and definitely yeah. ask questions because that's, that's the goal of a short film. You know, I've, I've always, I've been doing a lot of research, you know, when I was making short films, like, what is the point of a short film? What, what do I have to do? What do I have to accomplish to have mm -hmm. a successful film? And you can't really go into depth with a character. You can't. Right. You don't have that time. Just limited time, yeah. What you can do is you can focus on an emotion. You can focus on, you know, maybe to a lesser degree, a theme. But mm -hmm. primarily, a lot of the most successful ones just focus on emotion. Whether it's loss, sadness, um, you may not even know the characters' names. Right. But you feel what they feel. And if you can turn your film into an empathy machine, then that's that's really what filmmaking is about. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I definitely agree. And so so would you would you ever make a movie like that though? With a with an open ending? Ooh, or are you I would love to. I would love to. Um, I have to have a theme where that works, but I, I feel that's a very brave way to mm -hmm. end a film, short or feature length, you know, any length. Right. I don't know about a TV show. I guess TV shows kind of do that all the time, though, right? With cliffhangers yeah. and 
I guess the lead you to come back uh, to watch the next episode and stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, there's usually a tag, you know, right before the credits, a bad guy comes in and does <laughs> something or like looks at the camera and mm-hmm. says a cool line, and you're like, oh no, our heroes Somebody's are in pulling, trouble. Somebody's <laughs> pulling out a gun and boom, cuts and stuff like that. You gotta watch the next week's episode or whatever. Well, actually, now you stream things, so you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Watch the new episode now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think too many people wait for the the following week. So it, it's almost yeah. hard nowadays to do that because there yeah. are a couple shows that I've been watching week to week. Um, mm-hmm. Devs on Hulu, I was watching okay. that way, and is that yeah, a new show? It, yeah, it's a new show. Alex Garland, who he wrote Twenty Eight Days Later, the zombie film that Danny Boyle did. Uh-huh. He made Ex Machina, which is one of my all time favorite sci fi movies of the mm-hmm. 2010s i think it's 2010s um his most recent movie was annihilation with natalie portman which okay i think did all right i mean it, it was yeah I, it was good it I, was just it was different it was weird but yeah cool. i never i never seen it but i came across that trailer before yeah yeah but his show devs is it's it's very philosophical um in thinking about life technology mm-hmm. I, you know, I could almost compare it to tarkovsky's work if it was more modern, it's very, you could sit down and like, it's meditative. Right. In a way, which yeah. is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that was week to week. You know, it wasn't like, oh, the season's out. And <laughs> so how did that feel on today's, uh, well, I, I think I probably you? watched the first two episodes like back to back and I was like, wow, mm-hmm. can't wait for the next one. And then there was, you know, there's no next one for six days. <laughs> I couldn't take it. Right. <laughs> But, you know, luckily they have the recaps. This is what happened. Mm-hmm. Kind of set you up for what's coming next. The important bits you needed to know. Right, right. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, it's interesting how that could transfer over to a mm-hmm. film and how all these different disciplines, especially with television becoming more story and visual-centric. Right. How everything will merge in the near future. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's interesting, I tell you. I mean, it'd be interesting to see if cable's still around, you know, with, um, you know, as we were talking about the whole streaming thing, uh, you know, I, I don't know if people, how long are people going to be uh, tuning into shows where they got to wait like a whole week to watch another episode and stuff like that, you know, as you were talking about the show that you watch on Hulu, same thing. Huh? But yeah, it'd be interesting to see where things go. You yeah, know? especially with uh, so many streaming services now, you know, yeah. if it's $10 a month or something, you got to pay that multiple times to get all your shows that's right are you gonna stick you know you got an internet connection do you need cable yeah that's right don't know that's right (laughs) choice is yours (laughs) be interesting to see where it goes definitely would be for sure all right daryl denner is a feature filmmaker from new york city thank you so much for coming on our show daryl is Uh, there thank you very much is there any place where we... Do you have a website or a place where we can see your work, social media? Uh, right now, I'm currently working on uh, uh, my website. I did have one, but uh, it, it needs work. So I, I don't uh, have the information on that now because it, it may change uh, and stuff like that. Um, as far as seeing some of my work, I mean, I do have some of my um, uh, short films on uh, YouTube and, uh, and Vimeo um, just by typing in uh, my name. And uh, you can see some of my past work and stuff. So, but um, great. I'll put links in the description to all those. And thank you, Daryl, for going in depth. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much.